Hey guys, hope you're well. Oh my goodness, I'm being swarmed by cats tonight. It's been tricky trying to get anybody to join me uh, for the first few live streams, but now I'm surrounded. But that's probably because I have some dreamies in my pocket. Maui, honestly, goodness, you would think they are starving, these cats. Behind me is Little Miss Marvel, and then Starkey is just over here too. So we got quite a few friends and that's probably because today we are gonna be talking about fishies, yay! Ah, oh, the fun little friends. Oh, you guys have been so good, here you go. Um, if you're new to my channel, I should have first introduced myself. My name is Shelby from Shelby on Safari, aptly named. Although sometimes I feel like it should be called Maui on Safari. And I do animals on pop culture and animals related to pop culture things and videos on animals in general. I uh, am a animal biologist, wild animal biologist uh, by trade and definitely not a wordsmith by night. My goodness, I am a bit dreary today. It was really wet in Winchester and I had a run into work and I got a bit drenched, but it felt quite fitting for the mood of getting ready for our Animal Crossing video talking about five cool fish that you can fish for in January if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. And I'll cover some of the cool fish if you're joining us from the Southern Hemisphere as well. Please send sunshine if you're <laughs> in a place somewhere warm. That would be most appreciated. Hello, Alice. Uh, I got your friends here with me. I got uh, Mr. Maui, Marvel, and Starky Larky. And that's because I got the dreamies. So what we're going to cover today is how to fish. I'm new to Animal Crossing. I just got it for Christmas, which is super exciting. But I've been learning about the game and getting quite uh, addicted to it, for lack of a better word. I don't think my husband has even touched the Switch since getting the game for Christmas. Then we'll also be going over um, just what fish to catch in January, because it's very seasonal. And there's some fish that are leaving, some fish that are new, especially if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, they do rotate through in January. And then we'll also be going through the juicy part of the live stream, talking about five cool fish that you can get in January. I'll be focusing on some of the Northern Hemisphere, since that's where I'm playing the game from at the moment. And uh, yeah, some really interesting things. And I'll be frank with you guys, as a wild animal biologist, I prefer more of the mammals and even the avian species. And of course, invertebrates like my cool sun beetles, which are behind me and uh, stick insects and things like that. However, I haven't really worked with fish that much. I mean, I did go to school in Hawaii and got to, you know, do my labs swimming out in the ocean doing fish counts and things like that and of course I, I kind of like to eat fish as well but you know actually proper fish husbandry is not really my forte but that's why I got my little sister Lindsay shout out to her she definitely loves keeping fish and I can't wait to eventually visit her and she can teach me some things but what we're gonna do today is go over some really amazing species because I know when you play Animal Crossing you can obviously when you don't eat the fish to the museum. You can, you know, ask Blathers, the cute little owl, to tell you some facts, but we're going to go a little bit deeper into some cool things, including some studies as well. I love learning about recent uh, studies that have been done, and I found quite a few interesting ones to share with you guys later. But first, if you're new here and you want to learn more about animals in the wild, pop culture, I do Pokemon videos as well, all sorts of crazy stuff because I'm just that kind of person. I like to go here, there, and everywhere. Be sure to subscribe. I can't believe I'm almost at 300 subscribers. Thank you so much, everybody, for just joining along on this crazy safari with me. It's so exciting. I can't wait to see what this new year will bring. And don't forget to make that bell go ding. So that way you can join me for all these live streams when I decide, hey, let's do a live stream tonight. So let's get started just with how to fish. First of all, I want to say thank you to Alice because she's been showing me the ropes and the other day I went to her island and bought a really good fishing rod because obviously you can make a fishing rod with like tree branches and things such as that and then slowly work your way up but I did get a good good quality fishing rod when I visited her island which I recommend if you're new to the game uh, <laughs> visit a friend who has quite the upscale island and get a fishing rod from them and then of course just finding fish in general um, as you walk around the island you'll find them in the waterways either the pond uh, the clifftop river area, the sea, of course, you'll see a little shadow and the size of the shadow will tell you roughly kind of what kind of fish you can expect. And then also time of day and all sorts of different things, but you wanna be careful. I like to run around my island because I'm so excited and I've scared away quite a few fish. So do make sure if you see that shadow, slowly sneak up on it. 
And then you cast your fishing rod. And this is where I found it's been the trickiest. I want to see what you guys think as well of trying to land, you know, the little fish bait right in front of the fishy face. And sometimes depending on the angle, it can be a bit tricky, especially if you are short on time. Like, I don't know if you guys played on Saturday. It was the fishing tournament. I had no idea that that was coming. And it was between nine and six. And my goodness, I really tried hard in a span of three minutes to try to catch as many fish as possible and then sell them to CJ, which was quite entertaining. And uh, him with his little camera being all social media, it was quite uh, quite something. But I don't know. How did you guys do with your fishing tournaments? Because I found a few little nit trick things, which are cool. Ex what, what am I talking about? A few <laughs> neat tricks that I don't know if you guys already know. I had no idea. But the manila clams... The little um, spurts of water. I just thought that was a cool, like, atmospheric thing by the water. I didn't realize you could actually dig them up. And then the first one you dig, you'll have that bright idea of, ooh, I have an idea for a DIY project. And you can craft fish bait, which is really helpful during a fishing tournament. So I'm glad I found that out in time for the fishing tournament because, obviously, you want to catch as many fish as possible. And so using the manila clams uh, to craft them into fishing bait, you can just pop that into the ocean and magically fish appear. If only that happened in real life when fishing. But alas, uh, that's a cool trick. Doesn't cost anything. And, you know, fish will spawn in front of you and you can easily get, you know, at least seven fish. Uh, I think that was my record on Saturday. Let me know again how you guys did. If you guys fared better in the fishing tournament than me. Speaking of the tournament, the next one is in April. They happen on Saturdays. I believe it is Saturday, April 10th. Now, the cool thing about the fishing tournament, yes, you get uh, cool fish swag, which made me laugh out loud quite literally when uh, <laughs> CJ said that, but he also pays 150% of the normal price. So it really pays, even if you don't compete in the fishing tournament, to just go fishing crazy, catch as many fish as you can and sell them to him. And so then you can make quite a few bells, which is quite helpful when you're starting out like I am on the island and trying to build bridges and inclines and pay off my mortgage to Mr. Tom Nook as well. Now, uh, let's see. What day of, ooh, what time of day is best to catch fish? Well, it turns out, I would say probably in the nighttime, um, and it will depend on what type of fish you're after. And that is a great segue into part two of tonight's live stream of what fish to catch in January. But first, I need to give dreamies to the cats because they've been actually well behaved and haven't come and bit my finger. Um, there's one for Marvel. Here you go. Starky. Starky Darky. Oh, I think I hear Peter at the door again. I think he knows I'm giving dreamies to everybody. So in the Northern Hemisphere, because the game is really cool where it's divided when you first start out the game, you can either be in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. And in January, it's a bit slim pickings for fish, if I'm honest. Um... There's only 31 species of fish available out of the 80. So, which is great if you're a completionist like me and want to complete the fishy decks uh, per se, um, because none are leaving after January. Um, you know, there's not really much happening, but there's just 31. But there is a couple super special rare fishies that you can catch. Uh, one of which is the string fish which I will go into more detail later because that is one of the species that I wanted to dive into some really interesting facts about later on in the live stream. But the barrel eye is the other most expensive fish that you can catch in January in the Northern Hemisphere. And they pay 15,000 pounds, pounds, bells. Whoa, where is my mind at? <laughs> That'd be cool if it was in pounds, right? But no, alas, it's bells. Um, and with the barrel eye, you can catch it in the sea between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. And that is one of the fish. I am only missing two. And they are the two that I am missing in my fishy decks, the barrel eye and the string fish. And I probably will after this live stream. What, it's 8.08? Yeah, starting at nine o'clock, I'll be trying to catch the barrel eye fish. But because I don't think I'll be up at 4 a.m. At least I hope not, unless one of the cats wakes me up. But yeah, my best chance will be later on. So after 9 p.m., you can go after the barrel eye fish. So in the Southern Hemisphere, they have quite a few other options. I didn't actually research these guys, but they have cool names like the sweet fish, Napoleon fish, puffer fish, blue marlin, and the ocean sunfish. 
Then they do have one leaving in January. So if you're part of the Southern Hemisphere, be sure to go after the tadpole because it'll be leaving your waters in January. So if you're new and you're just joining us, um, I'm going through some cool fish facts that you can catch in Animal Crossing, but then also that exist in real life. That's one of the best parts of the game is getting to learn about the fossils, the bugs, the sea creatures, which if you missed that live stream, be sure to click in the description down below because we covered some of the cool, amazing sea creatures last week, like the sea cucumber. Let me know if you had a favorite one that we talked about. I liked learning about the mantis shrimp myself. But that was exciting. That was last week. This week is all about the fishy friends because we had the fishing competition on Saturday. And I thought, actually, let's dive right into some cool fish facts. And I thought I would start off with the weirdest fish. Well, weirdest because I always catch it. I don't know about you guys, but I always seem to catch a carp. Yes, the carp. Ah, I always think of magic carp. When I say carp, um, and if you don't know, I do my Pokemon animal comparison videos, and I'm just giving some more dreamies out to the kitty cats. There you go. Come on, Starkey. She's totally distracted by Peter, who's outside the door. But I'm not going to go get up and let him in, because he had his chance. Huh. There you go, Maui. So carps. They are really interesting fish. And at first, I was quite annoyed, because I was always catching them, right? And I thought, actually, there's probably going to be more to this fish than meets the eye. I should mention that because um, Katie asked earlier about what time of day is best to fish carps. Well, you can catch them all day long. Some of the fish, like the rare ones that I mentioned earlier, you know, between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m., uh, those tend to be a bit more rare. But the carps, pretty common, and they live in the ponds on your island. And I was curious because the game developers seem to do a lot of their research with regards to the animals and places where you can find them. So I was really pleased to see that while carps can survive in a variety of different habitats, they prefer living in bodies of water where they have slow moving currents like lakes and ponds and things such as that. So that's probably why they put the carp in places such as the ponds and the lakes of your island, which is quite nifty. Now, the British record for the heaviest carp caught was 67 pounds and 8 ounces. Whew, that's pretty hefty. Oh, that is a lot of fish. <laughs> I wonder what Maui, Maui, what would you make of that fish, sir? Can you see Maui? Oh, there you can. There. Would you like to meet that fishy? Yes. In fact, I think I do have fishy dreamies. Ah, what's the most expensive fish? What's my favorite fish? Oh my goodness, that's a tough one. Um, we will go over some of the more um, expensive fish like the barrel eye, which was like 1,500 bells, 15,000 bells. Uh, but the string fish, which we'll go over later is also quite expensive. Um, but I will probably say my most favorite fish towards the end. So you'll just have to wait. <laughs> Sorry, Alice. So the British record for the heaviest carp was 67 pounds, eight ounces. That is lots of fishies. And I, I wish in the game you could see, oh, you're coming up now. Come on then. So I wish we could see in the game just how heavy they are. I bet in like some games, because like in Pokemon, you can see how heavy your Pokemon are, especially in Pokemon Go, because then when you appraise them, they yell at you. They're like, oh, that's the heaviest. That's one of the more heavier Pokemon of this variety we've seen. And it's quite entertaining. Um, but these fish, carp, even though they seem quite basic, they are quite long lived. They can live for up to 50 years. However, most carp tend to live about 20 to 30 years, but I just thought that was insane because I typically, I don't know about you guys, but I don't tend to think of fish as particularly long lived or tend to think of things like that in general. So when I found out up to 50 years, that's insane. Um, now, carp, what was interesting about their kind of lifestyle is yes, they prefer, you know, slow current moving water. But they also, on sunny days, tend to come up to the surface more and bask in the sun. And which I find funny because obviously in the game, it's a lot different than real life because you see the shadows of the fish and you cast your lure trying, you know, to hit right in front of their face. So then it catches their attention, which is not quite like real life. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been fishing. I've had the chance to go fishing with my grandpa and my uncle a lot when I was younger. And then even... 
uh, which is one of my favorite places on earth. And I went fly fishing, which was really entertaining. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was quite the outfit, I must say, you know, for wading in the water. <laughs> um, but it was not only a beautiful part of the world, but a really interesting experience. So if you haven't been, I recommend, because it was nice to just spend some time out in nature. Uh, I did catch one fish um, and released it. I, I didn't take it, uh, but it was just really cool experience, I would say. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, because I was talking, now he's digging in my pockets for the dreamies. You are a very naughty boy and he managed to get one. Um, I'm wearing a hoodie and so it has like a kangaroo pocket and I put the dreamy packet in there. You are very naughty. Go on the bed, sir. So with carps, they're common in the game. And I was like, okay, but are they common in the real world? Like what's going on? Because I see them all the time, you know, magic carp are very common. Well, it turns out that carp are an invasive species and they've been introduced to quite a lot of places. And as an invasive species, they're actually taking away from, you know, the native species, kind of their food. Um, and because they don't have any predators, they are reproducing like crazy. But in their native range, in their actual range where they are properly found in the wild um, before being introduced to other places. The IUCN, the kind of governing body, the red list, um, you may hear it a lot on my channel, I refer to it quite frequently, but they're the ones who say like, oh, they're endangered, they're threatened, you know, vulnerable, things like that. They actually list the carp in their native range as vulnerable. Um, and that's just because they only reproduce in floodplains. And so when humans kind of make adjustments to the environment um that kind of destroys and modifying rivers for example maui you are very bad goodness gracious i'm trying to talk about carp here dude um <laughs> when people modify the rivers to prevent flooding this has major implications on the native population because they can't reproduce um and so yeah it's quite crazy because they do make food. People do breed them and keep them for food. And that's part of the reason why they were introduced to a variety of locations. But yeah, that's that's the carp for you. So they are technically common, you know, in other places. Okay. What's a carp? What's a carp? That's the fishy. That's all over Animal Crossing, miss. That's Maui talking, by the way. I do speak on behalf of Maui. You know, like Sven and Kristoff um, in Frozen. Actually, my husband does a better voice for Maui. I try, but I do understand what he's saying. I just can't really do his voice. But if you're a pet owner, I'm sure you, you hopefully know, or else this is going to be really awkward. Um, you know, your cats or your dogs or even probably your reptiles, they may even speak for you. Oh, they're saying hi to you, Maui. Yes. And I want to post this question out to you guys because with... So many friends joining me, Safari. Um, and if you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe. I'm tempted to bring in the new year by getting some Maui merchandise. Now, I was thinking maybe a little silhouette of Maui wearing the Shelby on Safari hat as either a pin or a sticker. And then I was thinking maybe before, you know, we post it out to you guys, little Maui will bestow a little kiss upon them. Won't you, Maui? Yes, because he loves things with his face on it. So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see some Maui merchandise. So that is the carp. That was one of our five cool fishies that we're going to be covering. The next one, oh wait, I forgot to talk about a really cool study because I'm scrolling through my notes because I took a lot of notes because there's a lot of cool things. Um, there's this study that was looking at, because a lot of carp are kept for food, um, and so aquaculture is a big thing, but this one study looked at rosemary leaf powder. Now, I love rosemary. We have quite a few rosemary plants in our garden. Um, there's rosemary water, you know, lemon and rosemary chicken. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite things, right? But these guys looked at rosemary leaf powder to see if it would help with growth, um, to even limit their stress, because obviously kept in big groups, you know, during aquaculture to see if it limits that. Um, and yeah, they found the, you know, giving these carp <laughs> rosemary leaf powder actually helped to promote growth performance and kind of help them uh, deal with crowding stress. So that was quite interesting. Rosemary leaf powder. Interesting. I, I really do like rosemary. Do you like rosemary? Let's see. We're gone? Oh, Maui merchandise. Yes, Maui, what do you think? Oh, the Crucian carp. Yeah, there's a variety of different carps. There's so many different species, but I just went with the kind of generic carp with this one. So the next fish species that we're going to cover and talk about this one. So the next 
fish species. I don't know if you guys have caught this one yet in Animal Crossing. The first time I did, well, actually, both times I've caught it, it totally caught me by surprise because it's really long and really daunting and scary as well. So these guys you can catch all day. Um, doesn't matter what time of day, and you can catch them in the sea. Now, oarfish were first described back in 1722. However, there's not really much known about these guys because they live in deep waters. Now, when I say deep, about depths of a thousand meters. And they don't really <laughs> come up much other than sadly when they've died and they washed up on shore um, because they're found kind of in the deep seas, both of temperate and tropical zones. So, you know, quite nice areas of the sea to live. And they are so big and quite terrifying looking, that it's believed that they could have been part of the inspiration for sea serpents, uh, mermaid legends, things such as that, because of their just long length and kind of elusive nature. And actually, a few years ago, oh gosh, when was it? Two washed up in my neck of the woods in California, one um, on Catalina Island, and then the other one I think was in Oceanside. And they were relatively close within a short span of each other. Um, when I find the article or whatever, I'll pop it in the description down below later. But it was really interesting. And sadly, that is one of the ways to study, you know, some of these animals that live in the ocean because it's so unexplored, you know, technology, um, you know, is improving and we're getting, you know, closer and deeper and getting some crazy footage. But with this species, it's been mostly when they wash up on shore. And they're uh, quite, quite terrifying when you think about it in terms of we don't know much about them. They could have inspired sea serpent legends. They could have, you know, they have a scary, there's something unknown that makes them scary, right? However, these guys are far from scary, I'm pleased to say. They, first of all, they don't have scales. Um, which I was like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, they are actually also one of the longest bony fish. Um, I got, how much is it? 17 meters? Let's see. Yeah, they are the law. They are the longest known living species of bony fish. So they get up to 17 meters in length, which makes sense if you're inspiring sea serpent legends. And they weigh up to 270 kilograms. So that sounds pretty hefty, but they don't have scales and they eat tiny plankton. So they're not quite like the vicious sea serpents that you may think they are. <laughs> um, yeah, they eat little tiny plankton. So they won't really harm us humans, but they do have a quite a interesting look, that kind of red fin. Um, some people refer to them as rooster fish because of that kind of red pectoral fin. So yeah, or fish are pretty intense. And I know when you pull them out of the water in Animal Crossing, it just feels like it's going on and on and on and you're pulling it out. Um, and some fishermen actually catch them, you know, in bycatch as well. So that's one of the other ways that we can study these animals. But probably the most bizarre study that I've read in a long time happened in 2020. And scientists performed artificial insemination um, using a recently uh, deceased pair of oarfish. And they wanted to observe, you know, First of all, how long it took the eggs, you know, to be fertilized, to hatch, and just see if it could be done. Um, because the species, as I mentioned, is quite rare and there's not much known about them. And so what they were able to do is use AI to do this and saw that it took 18 days for the eggs from fertilization to hatch. Um, but sadly, all the little larvae, um, they didn't eat after hatching and they died about four days later. So it was quite sad. But... Just that alone, being able to do that with species, it was a really interesting read. And I'll put it in the description down below because that's an area, again, like I mentioned, um, as a wild animal biologist, I tend to lean more on the mammal, the birds, you know, even the invert side of things. And so doing my research and reading about fish, uh, that's one of the reasons why I do this channel, actually, is to get to learn and stay curious and uh, talk about Maui. Hi, Maui. Oh, they're all going to the door because it's getting close to their dinner time. Uh, so that is the oarfish. And have you guys caught one? I see uh, still some of my friends. Oh, I've just seen a video of an oarfish in Mexico. Aren't they insane? I mean, they are quite daunting in Animal Crossing when you pull them out. And it's a bit like, ooh, that's quite the fish. But in real life as well, definitely take a look at um, that. And again, I'll find a video or something for the two wash.
up in California. Next of the cool fishies that you can catch in January, in the Northern Hemisphere at least, um, and some interesting facts about them, I thought I would go into the sea butterfly. And they're quite cute when you uh, reel them out of the water. Again, these are one of the fish that you can catch all day. It doesn't matter the time of day. You can catch them in the sea. As their name implies, they're found in the sea. So surprise. But Animal Crossing actually considers them to be uncommon, which uh, might make me feel a bit nervous about my fishing habits and playing Animal Crossing because I feel like I've caught a lot of these because I always get so excited. Um, you can tell in the Northern Hemisphere because uh, they're tiny shadows. So this time of year, they're the only, I, that sentence wasn't going to make sense. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, let's try that again. <laughs> um, in January, if you see a tiny shadow in the sea, it's going to be a sea butterfly. Um, assuming, well, I think there's the barrel eye too. I don't know what size shadow the barrel eye has um, because I haven't caught one yet. But alas, yeah, the sea butterflies, they're quite tiny. And there's a good reason why they're quite tiny because they are actually uh, snails. <laughs> they are tiny marine snails. I know they're called butterflies, but we'll get to that later. Um, and the group of sea butterflies is actually called theocosomes. I don't know if I said that right, but I'll say it with confidence so it sounds like I know what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, theo theocosomes is the proper name for sea butterflies. Uh, sea butterflies is kind of the casual name and it sounds quite elegant, right? I also know some people <laughs> refer to sea butterflies by a least elegant term called the potato chip of the sea. And this is because they are so important in the marine ecosystem, in the food web, because quite a few marine animals actually eat these guys. And so hence the potato chip of the sea, which I prefer sea butterfly. I don't know about you. Now, these guys, they're wings, right? So they're called sea butterflies and they have a nice illusion of being pretty, but their wings are actually their feet. Just let's think about that for a moment. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Flying with your feet. Sorry, I'm just picturing like me trying to swim with my feet. When I go swimming in the ocean, actually, funny story. Um, it, well, I don't know why it's that funny, but I have a beloved, I think it's because I'm reminiscing because I'm wearing my um, old uh, Seal Beach Junior Lifeguard sweatshirt, but I have a pair of fins. In fact, my mom still has them at the house. Uh, they're I can't remember what brand they are, but they are hardcore like ocean swimming fins. And my goodness, I loved swimming with them. Well, I still do love swimming with them when I'm in the ocean. I like body surfing, boogie boarding, you know, just diving, diving around. They are so good. And I remember lugging them about whenever we'd go to Catalina. Um, the, if you don't know, Catalina is a beautiful island off the coast of Southern California. Um, that's where one of the oarfish washed up to but it is a stunning, stunning place. Highly recommend uh, <laughs> visiting Catalina. But during Junior Guards, we'd often do so many fun trips of going to places like Catalina and hey, oh, they were so heavy and I'd attach them to my backpack because my backpack had like little Velcro, little clip things. And so I could clip them to my backpack, but it just like threw off the balance and walking around with these. But I, when I think of butterfly fish, you know, and their feet are their wings, that's like, how I felt quite powerful swimming. Like I could just swim quite fast with my feet alone. That's where I was going with that story. That's the connection I made inside my brain. Um, <laughs> thinking of swimming with my feet. Uh, now sea butterflies, what I find interesting about these guys though, with the game, you can find them all day long because Katie was asking earlier about kind of what time of day is best for fishing. So these guys are found all day long. However, in the real world, the sea butterflies, they come up during the day to eat and then they sink back down at night. They kind of go back down towards the bottom to the dark depths of the ocean uh, to hide from predators. So in reality, I would think maybe it'd be best to find, you know, sea butterflies more in the daylight hours than the nighttime. But to be fair, the fact that the game developers included sea butterflies to begin with is quite impressive. And they are actually found more in the colder waters, which I believe probably is why they have sea butterflies during the winter months, because giving the illusion of, you know, the colder climate water. So maybe that's why, rather than all day. Hi! Oh my gosh, you guys, uh, I can't believe she's on. I'm, I'm like blushing. I'm so excited. Cricket is a really cool YouTuber um, down in Australia, and she does some fantastic animal um, it's a community day episode. 
But yeah, it is so exciting. I can't wait. I'm so excited you're on my, oh, she's on my live stream. Maui, do you want to, oh, I was going to say if Maui wanted to say hi to you, but <laughs> they're all sleeping. There's Marvel um, and Cricket. I'll actually be the first to tell you, I am doing a video on Friday for Machop. Uh, I was going to do one on squirrels, but I've changed my mind because it's Machop Community Day, as I'm sure you know, on Sunday. And I'm really excited to be doing one of my Pokemon animal comparison videos, but it's going to be a little bit different than some of the ones I've done in the past. Oh my gosh, she's watching my live stream. I'm not fangirling. No, no. Yeah. Anyways, we're talking about sea butterflies, which is really fun because they're an animal crossing and you can catch them. Actually, Cricket, can you let me know if you play Others Islands and, you know, actually I got oranges. I don't know if Jenny, Jenna, Jenny, Jenna's on right now, but I went to her island the other day and I actually might have shaken her orange tree and taken some oranges back with me. Um, thanks, Jenna. Uh, thanks so much. So the sea butterflies, as I mentioned, they're actually tiny marine snails. Uh, so they're not butterflies at all. And being snails, they have shells. And these shells are quite intriguing, depending on the species of sea butterfly. They're, it's really hard to differentiate between species of sea butterfly, by the way, just by looking at them. But that's a whole other can of worms, for lack of a better word, <laughs> since we're just speaking of fishing. I feel bad making worm puns in a fishing video. Uh, <laughs> well, at least in Animal Crossing, we use manila clams as such bait. Anyways, so um, I wanted to talk about a few different studies regarding fish uh, that you can find in Animal Crossing. This particular study that was looking at sea butterflies actually found that the way that the sea butterfly swims, um, it's very different depending on the species, but it's also very different on the shape of the shell, whether it's flat, conical in shape, the size of it, it really affected the angle at which they swam and um, all sorts of stuff. And I just thought, what a cool study to look at just sea butterflies swimming. Like, I bet that is a sight to see because it's probably really beautiful. And there's a few videos um, out there on the winter webs. And I encourage you to take a look because it is really peaceful to watch and very serene. And speaking of these shells, the sea butterfly is also known um, <laughs> by lack of a, a better phrase other than potato chip of the sea, as I mentioned earlier, where they're such an integral part of the food chain for other marine animals. Their shells are almost like the canary in the coal mine because they are so sensitive to changes in the ocean's acidity. And so once again, another study was looking more into this, especially you know, with a variety of um, like climate change and all sorts of stuff going on in the world's oceans at the moment. It's really important and also quite sad to see these beautiful animals being affected that way. And so, yeah, hopefully studies like that will continue on in the future. So that was the sea butterfly. We're getting through these guys. I get so distracted so easily um, seeing friends join me on the live stream and cats scratching at the door. You are being very, very stinky, Starkey. Uh, Starkey, in fact, one of your friends is on watching right now. You should be a bit better behaved. Um, we're going to wrap up with the last two really cool animals that you can catch in January in the Northern Hemisphere. Cricky, uh, you're down in the Southern Hemisphere, so you have a few cool different animals. But if you do play Animal Crossing, be sure you catch a tadpole before they swim away at the end of January in the Southern Hemisphere. So the last two fish before I cover the bamboozled competition, which is super exciting, is the bitterling. Now I chose this one purely because when I catch an Animal Crossing, I'm so stunned by how beautiful of a coloration this guy is. It's rosy, you know, uh, blue and pink and all sorts of beautiful colors. And I thought, oh, they're so cute. I want to learn more about them. And so you can catch the bitterlings in the river um, all day between November and March. And I thought I'd focus more on the rosy bitterling, which is native to Japan, China, Taiwan, and even parts of Russia. And they have also been introduced to Fiji, South Korea, and Uzbekistan. So I thought I'd focus on the rosy bitterling because of that gorgeous color that I see in the Animal Crossing game. The guys in real life, the rosy bitterlings, also are beautiful, gorgeous color. And this is a great example of sexual dimorphism because the males when they're in breeding condition, will have more of an intense 
color. So the females are a bit plain, kind of like what we've seen in avian species. For Friday's Machop video, by the way, we'll be going into something similar with our good friend Machop, the Pokemon, because it's Pokemon Community Day on Sunday, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so we're talking about the rosy bitterling with this one because they can get up to three inches long. So they're quite tiny, which you can see in the game as well when you catch it. They're quite a little puny size. Uh, but as I said, they have a bit more sexual dimorphism because of the color, with males being a bit more intense. Now, one species of bitterling, I feel sad talking about things like this, but I feel like it needs to be said because, you know, when it comes to, you know, rare animals, we often think of the panda or tiger and things such as that, which we totally should. However, fish, I feel, get left out. Now, one species of bitterling is actually at risk of extinction because, once again, habitat destruction and lack of freshwater mussels. Mussels? What? Why do they have anything to do with the fish almost going extinct? Well, it turns out they're quite important for this species of bitterling breeding, which, okay, hear me out. This, this is going to get crazy, guys. So the, so the bitterling actually use freshwater mussels as almost like a spawning substrate. So the female has like a little specialized like tube where it connects to a specific spot of a mussel. And the female essentially puts two or three of her eggs on the gill of the mussel. First of all, poor little mussel, like being involved in this. But anyways, <laughs> the female puts two or three of her eggs on a certain spot on the gill of the mussel and kind of leaves. And then the male comes along and spawns into the gill cavity. And so, you know, just to make sure that the eggs are fertilized. I was like, whoa, that is crazy. Um, so thanks to the mussel. But unfortunately, because there's not as many mussels because of habitat destruction and whatnot, the fish are now suffering. So that is the bitterling and a crazy, crazy little tidbit about them uh, to wrap up. Well, not wrap up because we got to talk about the string fish. Uh, last but certainly not least, because earlier on Katie asked about the most expensive fish. I mentioned the barrel eye earlier, which you can only catch between the wee hours of 9 p.m. and 4 a.m., which is 15,000 bells. But then there's the string fish. Ah, which is also 15,000 bells, and I cannot find it. I can't find that in the barrel fish, and I need my bells. Um, so, yeah, the mussel is suffering, too. Yeah, I do hope they ask first. <laughs> That's a really good point. Yeah, excuse me. Um, may, may, may we have your assistance, please? Um, yeah, crazy. Crazy, right? I, I just could, I could not believe that. I thought it was so bizarre. Ah, you've been to China. Ooh! You probably seen a lot of cool of these fishies. I don't know if you went out searching for fish or you just kind of stayed and took some cool pictures, but I guess you'll have to go back to China and find some more cool fish. Um, <laughs> so last amazing fish that you can find in Animal Crossing and New Horizons is the string fish and the lift top river. So a very specific place on your island is the only place where you can find them between a certain time. And even on top of that, they are rare. They are really rare to catch. They're like the shiny Pokemon equivalent, um, if you will, of the Animal Crossing game, I'd say, because I've been trying, I've been using my fish bait by using Manila clams um, to DIY into fish bait, try to go up there and catch this guy, but I can't do it. Now, what I love, once again, is the game creators making these animals really representative of the real world. So it should come as no surprise then that the stringfish is rare in our world. And they are actually, I mentioned the IUCU and Red List earlier, that classifies animals, they are critically endangered. And so this means that they are super close to extinction. And so that's why they're quite rare in the game, I assume. Um, they. Uh, the name stringfish is the little translation of the Japanese name. And they're actually part of the Salmon family, Salamandae, uh, which I thought was quite intriguing because stringfish, I don't necessarily associate that with salmon because I think, you know, more of the, you know, pink salmon and, you know, salmon in Alaska. I didn't think that the salmon fish family were so like far spread, but they are. Um, they are, uh, speaking of how wide ranging they are, they're an East Asian species. 
Anyways, once again, another crazy one. Um, my background, you know, is in the big kind of cool animals like the cheetah and, you know, condor and green sea turtle and all these amazing animals. In fact, I can't wait to share with you guys in a few weeks a video where I go through uh, my personal top five favorite animals that, well, not favorite, top five coolest animals that I've worked with and um, share some of the interesting stories from my background. Um, but I, the reason why I bring the video up and plug that is because uh, I, I've done some work with tracking wild animals. And so I've always thought, you know, track the big stuff, you know, cool stuff. And, you know, talking about trackers and the different types of tracking is so intense. Um, but these guys, this study actually managed to track stringfish and they tracked 39 of them. Um, and they were kind of observing, obviously, because they're critically endangered, scientists are wanting to find out as much as possible um, to see how they can help and what kind of measures they need to introduce for conservation efforts and so on and so forth. And so they tracked 39 individuals to see how they use the rivers. Because in Animal Crossing, we can only find them, you know, in the uh, clifftop river aspect. And so um, I was curious to look at, like, why... Can we only find them in this particular area? What's the real world kind of equivalent? Um, and I found out that they actually use more of the river. And I wonder if it's because the game developers were like, hmm, because it's rare, let's make it at a really tricky location. Because in the real world, in the wild, um, individuals that, in, that were in the study, at least, that were tracked, they used both upstream and downstream quite extensively. They weren't kind of in one area um, and chose to be in that. However... It was also, I should mention that they use upstream or downstream regardless of the month or the year. But the crazy thing that I found out is that these guys actually were tracked to the ocean as well. Uh, adult individuals, they, they mentioned how adult individuals would spend no more than one day in the ocean before kind of returning back. So I thought that was quite interesting how they'd kind of make their way you know, go hang out by the beach, you know, lie in the hammock, which by the way, I do have on my island. That was like the first big purchase I made. They only hang out, you know, in the ocean for a day or two. You think, okay, maybe uh, why the game developers just put them in that, you know, specific area patch was also because the study found that they, the fish moved to the upper stream when the water temperatures downstream increase. So maybe it's more temperature dependent. So the water at the top on my own. However, my husband and I were recently rewatching an episode of Friends and guess what came up in conversation? Joey was auditioning to be a game show host and the game was called Bamboozled. I was like, what? what's going on? It was insane. Um, uh, so I called it bamboo's old because it's about your bamboo gardens. I love bamboo. I have some bamboo in my own garden and I need inspiration. And one of the things with Animal Crossing is it's so great how um, just customizable your kind of crazy bamboo gardens you guys have on your islands or if you haven't already challenge you to create something it doesn't have to be big but just be creative and share with me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter whatever uh, social media you use well I only use those three so hopefully you use those um, but tag me in your pictures obviously at Shelby on Safari and then using the hashtag bamboozled because why not? <laughs> it is such a fun word to say. But please share images of your bamboo garden. And I will be showcasing a few of them, a few of my favorites in an upcoming video. But uh, you still have time, obviously, to send me your pictures. Our last Animal Crossing live stream for the near future will be next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. where we'll we will be discussing bugs. Um, and a few of my own bugs might be making appearance. I see no reason why not. I have some millipedes, some cool cockroaches. As you guys know, if you uh, follow my channel, which by the way, if you haven't already, do hit subscribe and dash that little bell button. It really helps me out. And uh, I want to continue growing my channel and keep making awesome content, whether that be on pop culture and animals or just animals in the wild. And, you know, once kind of things get... Um, get going. I'd love to continue, you know, visiting places and seeing, you know, collections and things such as that. So please, please, uh, meet them on. But be sure to bamboozle, do your bamboo gardens, go catch some fish. And uh, hopefully you'll have gained a little bit more of appreciation for the carps or the oar fish or even the string fish and the little bitterling or the sea butterfly. If you had a favorite fish that I almost, I would say <laughs> what my favorite fish is, 
Well, I don't know if it is in the game because it, I imagine it's more of a warm watered fish, but a fish that I really loved watching and swimming with uh, growing up in parts of Hawaii and going to school there for a time is the yellow tang. And I really hope the yellow tang makes its appearance in Animal Crossing. I'm not going to do spoilers and look ahead. I assume maybe you would because it's quite a, a fun fish. It's, you know, the yellow fish. And if you don't know what a yellow tang is, uh, my bubbles from uh, Finding Nemo. So I really enjoy <laughs> those fish. That was really embarrassing. I, I really need to work on my impressions. But yeah, the yellow tang is my favorite. However, the favorite one that I've caught so far in Animal Crossing is the football fish because the little font underneath where it says some places call it the soccer fish uh, makes me chuckle because obviously being an American, living in England, I, I technically prefer the word soccer rather than football. But I think that's about it because it's almost time for the cats to eat and they're getting a little bit grumpy. I put away the dreamies because Maui was attacking my hands. But thank you so much for joining me, guys, as we covered some amazing facts about five cool fish that you and things. And hopefully over the next uh, few days leading up to that, I'll be able to catch a bagworm. I haven't yet caught one. Uh, I believe I need to go around shaking trees and have my net at the ready in case it's a wasp instead of a bagworm. Uh, well, yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys uh, so much. Bye, Cricky. Bye, everybody. Ah, oh, Sokka, yes. <laughs> Bye, Alice. Ah, oh, yes, and hashtag bamboozled. Have a good rest of the night and a good week. Catch y'all later. Now let's see if I can find the end button on the screen because I'm going to stare awkwardly. Starkey, did you want to say bye while I find the end button? <laughs> bye, guys.